Ladies and gentlemen, it's David Hall here, founder and chief executive of the Ideas Centre, and here to share with you an idea generation technique that rejoices in the name of brain sketching. In a previous video scribe, I've already explained via the creative problem solving cycle, the process for problem redefinition, taking the problem as defined by the problem owner and effectively supercharging it into the problem as understood. So we'll take that as read as part of the process. The facilitator then provides each of the members of the creative team with a sheet of A4 paper and maybe some coloured pencils and some coloured felt tips. Having done that, we then ask each member of the team to take their sheet of paper and draw a solution to the problem, unconstrained by any reality, so they can let go of any preconceptions. The only important thing is that whatever they draw in their head would definitely, without any doubt, solve the problem as understood. And the whole exercise, rather counterintuitively for a creativity technique, needs to be done under total exam conditions. No talking, no sharing of drawings, and critically, there should be no words or no numbers used within the drawing. It should all be expressed by the art and no conferring whatsoever. There should be no notes being passed, no explanations being given to any of the other members of the creative team. It's normally at this point that there's an outcry from one or two or even all of the participants that they can't draw, that this technique isn't going to work for them because they've got no innate artist within them. And for a facilitator, that is creative magic. Because if they were perfect artists, then this technique will work nowhere near as well. This technique plays upon a general inability to draw and communicate clearly. What I would normally do is allocate a five minute slot for this exercise and each member of the team, let us imagine there are three in this instance, will therefore have drawn a completely independent view of how to solve the problem with no real relationship between any of them whatsoever. At the end of the five minutes, each member of the creative team then passes their drawing to their neighbour, either to the left or to the right. So that there's a general passing round in a loop so that everyone inherits the drawing from either the left or to the right of them still under exam conditions, no talking, no sharing, no conferring. They must then look at the drawing they've been given and then modify it, adding their own artwork on top of the original to convert it into something that in their head would definitely, definitely solve the problem. And I'd allocate again another five minute slot for this. Again, no talking, no sharing. At the end of that five minutes, you repeat the exercise. You pass the drawing to the neighbor in exactly the same direction that you started. Each individual will then inherit a drawing that two other members of the team have already had a go at. Still, no words, no numbers. It's left to the imagination of whoever inherits that drawing to work out how it solves the problem and then spend another five minutes adapting it to a solution that would definitely, definitely solve the problem in the mind of that particular member of the team. Now, with just three people involved, this is effectively the final round of the drawing process. And each individual will need to effectively own this final drawing that they are now working on. If they want to use words or numbers, they should feel free to annotate it as they wish. Of course, if there are more than three people involved, then you merely scale up the process, allowing up to five minutes per round. At the end of the final five minute slot, so the whole drawing exercise maybe takes 15 minutes, if there are only three participants, we end up with effectively three intermediate impossibles, unbounded by any reality whatsoever, and each owned by the last person to work on that drawing. They'll be novel, but completely useless. They would solve the problem if only it were possible. Classic intermediate impossibles. Now the exam conditions can be relaxed and each individual is then given an opportunity to explain to their team members their solution. They hold up their drawing and explain it, making it crystal clear what it is in their drawing that actually guarantees that that problem will be solved. And it's at this point that a whole bunch of laughter normally explodes because there's a complete misconception as to why previous colleagues had actually done their drawing and the misinterpretation of it always generates a general situation of playfulness. With each member then having explained how their intermediate impossible works, between the group you then need to pick the best of those. And by the best I mean the one that most directly, without doubt, would definitely, definitely solve the problem, if only it were possible. What we then have to do is to identify the characteristics of that solution that make it work. It definitely solves the problem, but why does it solve the problem? What are the characteristics of it that make it work? And then the final step of the process is to find a solution in the real world that has exactly the same set of characteristics. 
What that will then provide is the germ of an idea that is both novel, because you've built it around the characteristics of that intermediate impossible that definitely solves the problem, but you've adapted it to the real world so it will also be useful. Bingo! That's the germ of the creative idea that you're looking to generate. Brain sketching is a fabulous creative technique, tapping directly into the right-hand side of the brain, avoiding the logical left-hand side, because it's demanding that every participant at least tries to tap into their inner artist.